Hello and back again. In the last video I talked already about the Push 3 and how you can do MPE with it. And it seems in my quick implementation there were some bugs left. For example, you couldn't do button combinations anymore. So also other modes did not work correctly. This is fixed now. And in this video, I will also show you how you can do MPE with Reaper. But to that in a second, first having a look at the fixed bugs. So for example, only in the modes which make sense to use MPE with MPE is enabled at all. So in the play mode, in the piano mode, the drum 64 mode, and the normal drum mode do automatically enable MPE if you have enabled MPE in the settings. But first let's have a look at the fixed buttoning combination. So if you go to the sequencer, create a new clip, and let's do something like this. And we go back to the play mode. We will also see that the pads light up and you can use the button combination delete. And for example, press the C and all C notes will be then deleted from your clip. So this is working now again as intended. A question I got multiple times was when you do the pitch bending, it does not respect the scale, which is correct. It always bends one semitone per pad, whatever scale you have selected. You can easily hear that. And this is how it comes out of the push device. And to make that respect the scales, it would be quite complicated. I would need to intercept the pitch band data as well as to rescale the pitch band data to the different nodes. And I'm not sure if this would not introduce quite some latency. And so we will stick with that. And I think it's still pretty usable as intended. And I think it works the same way with Ableton as well. Yeah, so you see the play mode can be banned, the piano mode can be banned as well. And you can band as well in the drum 64 mode. And even in the drum sequencer mode. So here you can band too if you have a C note. So you can also use that for recording. For example, if we have a new clip, which would run here, you could do... So this is possible as well. It does not work in a chords mode because in the chords mode, I add two notes and send this to Bitwig. I would now also need to modify the pitch data, which is not possible because with MPE, each note is sent on a different MIDI channel. And when I add a note, I don't know which one I could use because this one is automatically picked from the push so it's difficult to add additional notes in MPE mode and then I would also need to modify the three pitch bend curves for the chord to the correct MIDI channel which is also not possible so sorry for that but no MPE mode in this chord mode. So so much for bug fixes let's switch over to the Reaper. So now I started up Reaper and with Reaper I added a track and loaded Search XT. If you never heard of Search XT, it's a totally free and great sounding synthesizer plugin and it also does support the clap interface which allows MPE normally and also individual pitch bending of each note. The only thing you need to make sure is that here MPE mode is enabled in the plugin and then you can already play along and do the same stuff as you do in Bitbig. So the specific here is that it's not naturally handled by the door. It's just routing through all the MIDI data. And so the plugin needs to support MPE, which is the same case in Bitwig as well, if you use external plugins. So not much different if you use, uh, for example, a clap plugin. And let's see what we can do with it. Maybe let's do a similar demo as we did with Bitwig. So for example, let's look at the filter cutoff. Let's close that down and let's say we want to open it with pressure, MPE pressure. And you see here you have MPE pressure and we also have MPE timbre. So both are available as well as you saw in the last video for Bitwig. So you need to double click that to start mapping and then you can just change controllers. You could also change multiple controllers with that. So let's map that one to pressure and let's map timbre, for example, let's say, 
to the feedback, but before that, let's put the feedback, the filter feedback to zero. So we get some crunch when we pull that all up. And that's already what we did. So let's try to play that. Maybe we can also change the track color to something more visible here. See, I can open the filter. So this gets a bit more crunch. Maybe let's get a little bit more interesting sound. Let's pick that one. And here we could do the same. So map the MPE pressure. Oomp. Map the timbre. Yeah, you can hear it a little bit better with that sound, what's going on, but you could map it to anything weird parameter you would like to change here by simply enabling that. So lots and lots of possibilities, but just wanted to show you how you do MPE with Reaper and it's really easy to use as well. So as I said already in the last video, everything looks exactly the same as with Bitwig and you can navigate it the exactly same way as I showed in the previous video. So check out that if you didn't see that so far. And until next time, make some funky music. Thank you.